Hi, I'm Brian Kellerman, co-founder and chief food safety officer at Kellerman Consulting, and this is a video on key metrics in our culture of food safety. Key metrics are also known as key performance indicators in quality management systems. So if you've worked in those systems before, we are talking about the same thing. As we define it for folks who have not used them in the past, a key metric or performance indicator is something we measure within operations to determine if our process works and if the organization is functioning. Like the core values we discussed in the first video, these are the heart of operations and really we could do well by lining up core values with key metrics. And if we can do that, we should have a very strong link between those core values and our key metrics. Because we are focusing on a culture of food safety, we want to make sure we remember that the metrics are tied directly to our understanding of our culture so that as we measure, we are measuring the culture of food safety. When we are setting key metrics or key performance indicators, we are going to try and avoid generalities like be the best company or deliver the tastiest products to our customers. While these are of course valuable things to strive for, what happens if we are the best this year and next year we are still the best but not quite as good as last year? That may not show up until we're no longer the best and then it's too late. Generalities are happy talk and we really want some basic data here to tell us how we are doing, where we are going, and how we compare to where we were. That way we don't lose our way as a company. For the culture of food safety, we recommend at least two key metrics or performance indicators to include safety practices. So this might be performing one training per month on safety or performing four walkthroughs to evaluate worker safety or food safety each week. We like these simple types of metrics because they are counting metrics. You won't need a complex formula to follow them. For food businesses that perform safety or quality testing on product, those specified results might just be the perfect metrics to add as key metrics. If we are measuring moisture content, fat percentage, salt content, viscosity, the absence of hormones, or if we test for pathogens, we have data that can be plugged directly into our key metrics for the company. This can seem really obvious because if a bakery, for example, has to have a certain moisture of cracker to be in specification, of course it must be correct every time. But that's okay. What we care about is that when there are deviations or out of control results, they go right into the core evaluation of the functioning of the business, and they tip us off if we might be losing control of operations where there's a spike. High-level key metrics or performance indicators are often organized into dashboard presentations, and that is a great approach. However, it is not required to have fancy graphics or charts for key metrics. What is important is that they exist, that they are tracked consistently, and that they fit into management decision-making on operations, setup, structure, delegation, and ultimately on how we evaluate our core values. These key metrics should be reviewed by management as often as is necessary to make sure that the facility is operating within acceptable limits of the metrics, and usually that is performed at least once per quarter. Where there is a failure in the metric, we should not wait until the next scheduled review of our key metrics, but instead should promptly organize a meeting to discuss why the facility failed at this metric, what the corrective action should be to address this, and what preventive action must be taken to make sure the failure does not occur again. It's important here to review the concepts so far discussed in the Culture of Food Safety series to this point before we move into the practical actions to build up the culture of food safety in later videos. Leadership must hold themselves and employees accountable, looking carefully for employees that attempt to or succeed in being defiant or acting with impunity so that we can end that behavior. We need to have a clear structure and clear pathways of delegation to make sure that initiatives are carried through all levels of the organization, and we need to make sure that the structure is built on core values that drive our processes and behaviors to make sure operations always reflect those values. Lastly, 
We need to have measurable metrics or indicators that are consistently reviewed to tell us if we can objectively and empirically observe proper adherence to those core values and company structure and that our people are holding themselves accountable in their actions.